This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. And here we are with our continuation of the Wi-Fi pineapple mesh network kind of series that we're working on here. And I want to show the second node in our network and kind of how that all con uh, comes together. Um, so let's just jump right into it, right? So here we are. We're about 500 feet uh, across from the other building where we have our parabolic antenna on the roof. We're doing a point-to-point -point link, if you haven't been following along, between two Wi-Fi pineapples with high-gain antennas. And we're doing this legally because it is a point-to-point, -point, meaning only one node to another node. And then from there, the beauty of the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark V is that we can use the second antenna as a, or a second wireless adapter as another access point then to reshare out that connection to, well, in this case, it's going to be more clients here uh, at this loft, as well as a bunch of other nodes throughout the neighborhood as we continue putting together this system. So um, I say pineapple, however, we're really talking about, we're not even getting into some of the fun esoteric man in the middle -y bits. We're really talking about uh, just using you know, OpenWRT as a beautiful base to do some really fun wireless networking. Uh, and so let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware first, and then we'll get into how the software works. Uh, so this being the second node, we're actually using, rather than a parabolic, but a panel antenna here. I can just pull this right off. Um, and this guy, I've just got, you know, Velcroed onto the window. Um, you know, I find that I get a better signal than if, say, I have it in front of the locker or cement or any of that other stuff. And we can see here our orientation. All antennas are going to have an orientation. Last week I messed up and said it was a horizontal polarization. It's actually vertical. And we can see that we've got a V there. And that's, you know, letting us know to put the antenna this way instead of that way. Because it is a square, so I don't know how otherwise you would know. Um, and then we've got our pigtail here, and let me just set that back up. And this pigtail is coming over here. Let me grab this guy. And this is our Pineapple Mark V. Um, so that pigtail is coming into this SMA port here, and that is for our uh, Realtek 8187 radio. And that's the one that is a client to the station across the street. This antenna is just the you know, 5.6 dBi uh, gain dipole that comes with the unit because we're using that for a point to multi-point. So this is the high gain guy, and then this is just our standard running as an access point. You may notice I've done a little modification here. That's called electric tape, and that's called wondering how many LEDs you have blinking in your bedroom. Fun stuff, huh? So one of the things that I, I'll point out here is that I'm actually using a pretty good uh, length of coax cable here. I'm getting a little bit more signal loss than I wanted. It's not exactly cut to length, so I may go back later and get a, a, uh, a smaller antenna uh, cable. However, what's nice about this is it allows me, you know, with the, with the previous pigtail, I'm pretty sure I have it in here somewhere, but um, previous pigtail was only about this long. And I actually noticed that I get much better signal when I have more diversity between these two antennas, especially this being really high gain. And actually, I learned a lot about that when first experimenting with this and channels. So let me just put this right back up here. You know, the, the fun ISM band that we love to have too much fun with. And, um, and in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, when we talk about traditional Wi-Fi, in, in this case, we're using G, um, we have, well, in the United States, 11 channels to choose from. Um, in Europe, you can have 12 and 13 channels, and in Japan only, you can have the 14th channel. But as far as like channels, they're, they're really just slices of the spectrum. And each channel that you operate under takes up about 20 megahertz of bandwidth. So channel one, for instance, actually overlaps with channels two and three. And um, as such, there are only three non-overlapping channels. So one of the things that I like to do whenever I'm setting up a, uh, a system is I want to see what's in the neighborhood, what channels are available, what's, what channels are most uh, squashed, and, uh, and then choose the one most appropriate. So for that, I like to use in SSID -er by MetaGeeks. This is good stuff. Um, also, Kismet is a great tool. And really, anything that is going to allow you to take a look at what's out there. So in the SSID or, or Insider or however you pronounce it, it's showing me here that we have a ton of different access points. In fact, channels 1, 6, and 11 are kind of your defaults, your, your standard that most 
routers out of the box are going to want to try to use. Um, and I honestly, did, I, this is one of those things where you have to experiment because it's going to vary depending on your location. And this here being a busy neighborhood, we have a ton of different access points here. So I've opted to stay on channels four and nine, kind of non-standard stuff. But I'm finding as long as you have enough of a slice of the spectrum that isn't being squashed by somebody else, you can actually get some pretty decent throughput as I'm getting right here at about nine and a half megabits per second. I'd say that's not bad. Not, not bad for G, and definitely considering, uh, hey, 23 millisecond ping, I could almost game with that. Um, so let's go ahead and get into some of the configuration here. Now, I mentioned that I'm using pineapples, but honestly, it's just because it's what I have at my disposal, and it's already an OpenWRT device that has two, uh, uh, two independent radios. And so since I'm trying to do a point-to-point -point mesh, I want to keep things simple and just use one antenna or one uh, radio adapter as a client and one as an access point. And so that's what I have set up here. So let's go ahead and log into not this pineapple, but the one on the roof over there, because from there we can take a look at how that's the one that's power over ethernet connected to our, uh, to our network at the Hack5 studio. We can take a look at how that's configured and then take a look at how this one's configured. It doesn't matter whether you're a UDP packet or a joke I'm not sure you got. When that killer idea hits, you gotta snag that domain name and the web hosting fast. And with Domain.com's quick domain discovery system and their easy checkout process, you'll have your website up and running in no time. I love these guys, Domain.com, because they're affordable, they're reliable, they're easy to use, plus Domain.com's active social media presence. I mean, it really just makes it a great place to do business. And the guys over there at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5, so they want to hook you up with this coupon code HAK5. Really easy one to remember. Use that at checkout for an extra 15% off. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. And we're back with the trivia question of the week. Now, first off, last week's trivia question was, unijunction transistors, aka UJTs, are often used in simple oscillator circuits. What characteristic of a transistor defines it as unijunction? And that answer was, its internal structure has only one actual junction. Now this week's question is, if you are the victim of a Smurf attack, you're the victim of what? You can answer that over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack5 goodies. So let's go ahead and SSH into our first node here. And immediately what we want to do is edit three configuration files found in Etsy config and here we'll see that we have uh, wireless, network, and DHCP. So let's first start with network. Uh, basically what we want to do here is define our you know, IP address. So option IP adder, we're going to set this with a static as uh, .73.31.9. We're going to set a gateway, and this is the gateway of the router at the Hack5 Studio, as well as an option for DNS. And I just like to use Google's because it's easy to remember. That's pretty much all we need to do as far as uh, changes under Etsy config network. Now let's go into, uh, let's nano wireless and take a look in here. Now under wireless, we actually define the two devices, radio zero, and it's using a Mac 802.11 driver. Uh, HW mode is the hardware mode and we're doing uh, 802.11, both N and G. We see our Mac address here. Uh, HT mode is actually the uh, the bandwidth that we're using. So in this case, HT20 means 20 megahertz of bandwidth. You could even do HT40 for twice as much bandwidth. It uh, really just depends on the regulations in your area. Uh, and you can see as far as the area is concerned, option country, US. So we're here in the United States, option TX power, 24. We've coupled our 24 with uh, DBM, with our 24 DBI to get that 63 DBM of power. And then our channel, and in this case, you just, I just have coded this to channel four. I want to make sure that our first node and our second node are, are not rebroadcasting on the same channel because then they're kind of talking over each other and it's not as much fun. Otherwise, uh, once you have defined the actual Wi-Fi device, which is the physical radio zero, then you can define the Wi-Fi interface. So again, it's using the device that we just defined as radio zero. We're putting on the network LAN. 
and we're setting up the mode as AP. So AP access point, real simple, we just give it an SSID, so in this case, point mesh one. We give it an encryption type. Now this encryption type, PSK2, what that means is WPA. So just like we have that really weak WEP, which you should not be using, uh, we have WPA, which would use a TKIP cipher, as well as WPA2, which will default to a CCMP cipher, which is a lot more secure. So that's definitely one that we want to use, and we'll come back to that here in a minute. Uh, as far as the key, since we are using PSK, PSK means pre-shared key as opposed to a more enterprise level where we have a radius server authenticating us and we're not quite there yet. So we're all just going to share the key. And in this case, I'm just temporarily using lame password. Um, after that, you know, you can comment out the other radio. We're not actually using the other radio in this instance. However, um, do doesn't matter what you do because it will come back when you rerun the Wi-Fi command and reinitialize the, uh, the radios. So nothing to worry about there. I can close out of that. And then finally, since this is actually being used as an access point on our existing local area network at the Hack5 uh, Studio, we want to go ahead and turn off DHCP. If I nano DHCP, the easiest way to do that is simply to comment it out. I mean, yes, you could stop the service, but I just commented it out. and That takes care of everything there. So that is our first node. Let's go ahead and take a look at the one that's actually our second node that's connected to it and um, you know, rebroadcasting a network here in this building and then that will then use as a jumping off point for so many other places. So let's SSH over. And again, the same uh, three files are going to be the ones of interest. And so I'm going to cd to slash etsy config and let's start with network. So in this case, we're using a static IP. And in fact, I'm just using straight out of the box, very similar to the way that the Wi-Fi pineapple works. We're using an address scheme of 172.16.42. Well, one for the router. But uh, with our net mask of 255.255.255.0, that makes this a slash 24 network, so we can have 255 hosts. So you can kind of think of it as 172.16.42.x. Um, and again, we set our gateway. Now in this case, our gateway is actually the gateway of the router uh, on the Hack5 LAN, not the first node in our network. Okay, so we're using 1073311, which is its gateway as well. We set our uh, DNS options. Again, I just like to go with Google, but open DNS is a good alternative. Um, and then the rest of it, pretty much bone stock. All right, and so now let's take a look at the wireless configuration of our second node. Same idea, you define radio zero. Uh, we've set up our channel. In this case, it is on channel nine. Uh, again, 11NG, we're using 20 megahertz bandwidth here. And radio zero is our access point radio. That's the Atheros chip here that we're using, and that's what's going to be running as our access point. And so that's why I'm running on channel nine, because I don't want to overlap with channel four. Uh, we give it an SSID, and again, same idea, PSK2, I'm using WPA with the CCMP cipher, pretty strong stuff, and again, a super lame password for our password. So now we've created another access point, but its backhaul is actually to the first access point. And so to look at that, we take a look at radio one. So whereas the previous one, we were only using radio zero as an access point, now we're using the second radio as our backhaul. So radio one, we set it to channel four, and uh, we give it a MAC address. That's the only thing that we need to specify physically. After that, as far as the interface is concerned, we choose our device that we just defined. Now we put it on a network. The network is going to be WAN, because that's our backhaul. That's the wide area network. And we're going to set its SSID to the SSID that we're connecting to. So this is now becoming a client. It's uh, connected to point mesh one, and we can tell it's a client because the mode here is STA. So instead of mode AP for access point, mode STA for station. Station means it's a client. Um, again, we give it the same key for that PSK, and we tell it what kind of encryption we are using. And so we actually specify PSK plus CCMP. And we can close out of that. And then lastly, it's DHCP, which we really haven't changed. I mean, this is pretty much stock from the pineapple. And uh, this is really standard for any OpenWRT configuration. But you can actually come in here and choose what address blocks. Like right now, we're only giving out 50 addresses. We're giving out 
the ones that end in dot 100 and the ones that end in dot 150. And we set our lease time and all of those other options. Like these DHCP options here are actually the IP addresses of the DHCP server. Anyway, suffice it to say, with all of these up and running, that one access point connects with you to the other that has the backhaul to the internet, and it relays its own access point with a different SSID, and that keeps things the most simple if you ask me. And this is a great jumping off point. And so there we have it, our second node, which is actually the most useful node because it's the actually one connecting to our network across the street. And this is, like I said, a beautiful jumping off point because I can actually see so many other places here in the point where we're going to be deploying more, um, I guess, less permanent nodes to the network. This is uh, really fun too because I actually have like decent throughput here. I'll get anywhere between you know, eight or 10 megabits per second, which I'd say over 802.11g with a theoretical maximum of 54 megabits per second, is pretty good. I've, I've gotten it up to 30 megabits, but the thing is there's a lot of stuff going on in the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. And while you could go ahead and de-auth all your neighbors, that's no way to make friends. Uh, I'm not advocating that in the slightest. Uh, so one other thing on when we were talking about the, the ciphers that I'm using here for the backhaul. Uh, PSK2 is using WPA2 with the CCMP cipher. Now you could use WPA1 with the TKIP cipher, however there are attacks for that, and you should absolutely not use WEP, um, Wireless Equivalency Protocol, because it's you know cracked in 10 seconds. So the thing that I will mention about that, however, is that depending on your client, if it's not uh, set up properly, it may or it doesn't know how to speak WPA2 very well, it may uh, reset every 10 minutes. And if you've ever like noticed something where like, your Wi-Fi connection resets every 10 minutes, it could have to do with the group key renegotiation. The thing about WPA2 and CCMP is that it'll you know, re-key, meaning it'll choose a new, you know, a set of data that it's going to use for its cipher every 10 minutes. Now you can change that with the option in OpenWRT using WPA underscore group underscore re-key. If you set that to 3600, it'll re-key every hour. If you set that to zero, it won't re-key, which isn't suggested. It's probably better to kind of troubleshoot what your client is to this. Um, I haven't, thankfully, since I'm using just two pineapples, needed to do that, but if I were using some other gear, that might be an option I need to look into. Anyway, uh, again, this is very exciting to be doing this kind of ad hoc project here. No pun intended as far as Wi-Fi modes are concerned. And uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. So feedback at hack5.org. And uh, until next time, let's, uh, let's get back to the studio and see what's going on.